Now, I know what you're thinking. Some random dude, how can you possibly upgrade what's already the most flawless and most perfect feature with an RPG Maker MV? The timer, I mean, just look at it. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> look at it. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Timer upgrade. Let's go. The Timer Upgrade Plugin, a plugin that upgrades your game's timer system to make it better looking and more mechanical usability and, and stuff. It's good. It's, it's, it's great. Immediately after installing the plugin, the first thing you may notice is that the timer is now pretty different. Now it's centered in the middle of the screen, has a subtle yet helpful background to make the timer pop out, and now it includes milliseconds along with those time minutes and seconds available. So, yeah. Let's first go over everything that makes this possible. First is the timer format, which allows you to customize the format of the timer that appears on the screen. So as you can see right here, there are different symbols that correspond to the hours, minutes, seconds, or frames that can be shown through the timer. By default, it's set to minutes, colon, seconds, colon, milliseconds, or frames. But you can also set it to use, like, I don't know, dashes and stuff like that. Or you can even include hours by adding, you know, percent one. So we'll do, like, percent one dash that so it could be like hours minutes seconds and then frames just like that and as you can see here now the timer has been set to that format just like this so yeah it's up to you how you want to customize it next is a timer position as you can see by default it's gonna be set to the top but you can set it to top left top right bottom left bottom or bottom right so we can set something like i don't know bottom dash left like that and then, wa-bam! As you can see right here, whoa. <laughs> yeah, there we go. The timer's gonna appear in the bottom left corner instead of in the top middle. So once again, it's up to you where you want your timer to appear, and you can customize that within the parameters to your liking and stuff. So, yay. Next comes the sound effects. You can set up a sound effect to be played when the timer starts and when the timer ends. As you can see right here, you just need to follow the format of the file name, the volume, the pitch, and then the pan. So by default, it's going to be a one for when the timer stops, but not for when the timer starts. It's it's up to you which, how you want to do it. You can set it so it's like a sword, one, volume maybe 80, maybe pitch of 100, and then pan. Of, it's like literally what I did right here, but you know, it's, it's sword one. Yeah, and, that, and that'll, that'll do that. Next is the pause color, and this is the color of the timer when it's paused. A new feature added to this plugin is the ability to pause a timer using a plugin command. Simply use the plugin command pause timer to pause the timer. On the other hand, use the plugin command unpause timer, as you can see right here, just like that, to unpause the timer, respectively. So as you can see here, we can first start the timer like this, and it'll start counting down like that. But now when we go to pause the timer, we can pause it just like that, and it'll be frozen on that specific time, and it's going to be colored in yellow, since that's that's a pause freeze color. Yeah. Anyway, when you want to unpause the timer, simply call the unpause timer function like we showed earlier, and then bam, it's unpaused. So yeah, pausing is now available. Cool. Finally comes the use background parameter, which is obviously going to refer to whether or not you want to use a background for your timer. So as you saw, the background's just going to be like a black, like shading gradient from non-transparency to transparency and stuff. If you want to remove that, just set it to false, or if you want to keep it, set it to true. Yeah. Next, let's focus on more of the mechanical properties of the timer. First is the auto stop. If you want the timer to automatically stop itself or remove itself from the screen when it ends, set this to true. Next is the auto pause. If you want the timer to automatically pause itself when events are running, set this to true. As you can see, when a timer is running and we interact with an event like this, the timer will pause just like this and not continue while the event is running. So yeah, as you can see, I'm an event and as you can see, the timer is paused. When the event ends, the timer begins again. Furthermore, if you want to customize the opacity of the timer when it's pause from the auto pause simply change it right here it can be valued from 0 to 255 just like that or anything in between so maybe like 120 and that's a pretty good transparency i like to use finally is the auto abort function now by default timers automatically abort a battle when the timer ends if you set this as true this feature will be retained meaning so when you have a timer in battle that timer will end the battle if the timer ends but if you want to remove this function just set this to false just like that there we go and then finally, the last main function added to this plugin is the label function, as you can see right here. Using this, you can customize a label that appears on the timer. For example, Jan Jandals. Yeah. Now, as you can see, that label will appear on the timer just like this. So, yeah. J Jandals. Cool. Essentially, you want to use this for when you create a certain side quest or a certain, like, mission that has a limited amount of time. You can use a label to recognize, like, what, what you gotta do for that mission and stuff. So yeah. Personally, I would recommend keeping the default label blank just like that. If at any time within the game you want to change the game timer label, simply use the plugin command set timer label then label so we can set to ch chickens. Yeah. So as you can see, by interacting with this event right here, it changes the label to chickens just like that. 
Furthermore, you can also input variables into your labels. Simply do backslash v and then within the square bracket input the variable id, so for this example 1, just like that. So say for example, you want to create a mini game where you have to catch a certain amount of chickens within a certain time frame. First, create a label that uses a variable, for example, variable id1, set that variable id1 to something like chickens and set it to 3 or something, and then make sure so there's events like chickens, for example, and every time you catch a chicken, it decrements that variable by 1, just like that. So as you can see right here, the timer's label set the chickens and variable 1, which is going to be 3. If you don't interact with that chicken, it'll decrement that variable by 1, just like that. So now as you can see, we make so we get catch all the chickens, and every time we do so, it decrements by 1. So yeah. The final parameter functions are just various functions you can use to change the font, font size, italic, text color, and outline color of the timer in your game to make it more unique and stuff. You, you could you could change it or keep it the same, whatever whatever you want to do. It's it's pretty self-explanatory. Another super important function added to this plugin is the ability to call a common event when a timer ends. Simply use the plugin command set expire common event, then the common event ID, just like that. And as you can see right here, we'll first start a timer, then set an expire common event to ID number one, just like that. For testing purposes, we'll set common event 1 to say, uh, the timer has ended, with an exclamation point, just like that. And now as you can see, when we activate the timer just like this, and we run around for a bit, when the timer reaches 0 and 1, 0, there we go, the common event will be played, and then the timer will end just like that. So using this, once again, you can create specific common events, or specific events in general, to occur when the timer has ended, making control a lot more easier over your stuff. One thing to keep in mind though, is that every time you use an expired common event, you have to set up a new one. So every time you start a new timer, if you want to set a specific common event to be called, simply use a set expired common event. On the other hand, if you don't want one to be called, simply set this to zero giving you control over over what happens. Last but not least is the ability to control the timer without having to use the event. So we could delete this and instead use a plugin command. So simply use the plugin command set timer, then input the frames, seconds, minutes, and hours you wish to use. So we can set frames to maybe like, I don't know, zero, seconds to maybe like 30, minutes to maybe uh, two minutes, and then hours to zero, just like that. And that'll make it so the timer will be set to two minutes and 30 seconds. And as you can see here, the timer does exactly that. And then finally, you can also add time or subtract time from your timer using the add timer plugin command. Simply input a time for maybe like frames, seconds, minutes, and hours, and that'll be added to your timer. For example, let's say you want to add one minute to your timer, simply set the minute to one, just like that. And now as you can see, when we interact with this person right here, they'll add one minute to our timer just like this. Now we can keep going up and make it so it's a lot of minutes and stuff. But anyway, once again, that gives you more control over like how your timer is controlled throughout your game. Also, if you want to subtract time, simply use a negative sign like that. So now that removes one minute from your timer. Yay. But anyway, that's about it for this plugin. If you enjoyed, the download link is in the description of this video along in with with stuff. Yeah. If you, if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. That'd actually be really appreciated and stuff. So that, yeah, that'd, that'd be cool. Like I, like, I would actually, like, think you're, like, the coolest person ever if you did that. Now, you're probably thinking, well, if multiple people give this video a thumbs up, wouldn't you, that make multiple people be the number the one spot that can only be the greatest of your favorites? Maybe. I guess you'll have no choice but to fight it out in the, in the, in the comment section where you can, should also leave a comment. The, the comments are good. They, 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 they make me happy. Anyway, uh, that's about it. To end off this video, here's a video of me, like, with with a package of strawberry Oreos. They're pretty good. I opened them up. Like, I, I, don't, I, don't do, I don't do anything with them. I just open them up, and that's it. But, yeah. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye!